Bring this to the rendezvous point and get the hell back to Dodge. Don't stop for red lights, don't stop for a smoke, don't stop for a piss. Comprende, amigo? Wait, wait! What the fuck? Wait! We're not done, amigo! Listen, don't fuck this up. Focus. Focus. Leave this circle and you gotta watch your back. Plenty of creepy crawlers out there, no voodoo to keep you safe. But this is what you signed up for, right? There's more to the morning light than clean living, handing out flyers on the subway and trying to get vertical with Miss Dreadlocks from Orientation Week. We're harbingers of change, dude. We're prophets of mutation. We're disciples of doom. But change won't happen unless we up and act. Sure, Rome wasn't built in a single day, but it sure as hell wasn't built by deadbeat procrastinators lazing around on their asses, smoking weed, either. Just get it done. Bees on me 24-7, dude. That's how this thing works. Shit rolls downhill. And the boss has made it pretty clear this is important, and it's gotta be taken care of now, not later. Not when you feel like it. Toot fucking sweet. Comprende? Everybody's gotta pull their fucking weight, dude. Anybody else is just dead weight. Well now, I'm not much fit for entertaining, but I reckon you ain't much in the mood for hospitality either, am I right? Oh, I'm not a big talker, eh? I'm used to that from a surly husband and kids more comfortable with kicking a ball around and having a conversation with their ma. Name's Nama. Nama Creed. Raised a family up here before this dungeon thick fog came took him as my story. Helen sent you over to check on me, I reckon. Now, your concern is wicked kind, but I don't need any pitying. I got my shotgun, I got what's left of my wits. I'll manage. Now, this hullabaloo began after the Lady Margaret came back. My husband, Larry, the others, we all thought that they'd gone missing out there, that the sea took them. The day they came back, whole town could finally breathe again. But then came that fog, like it was following them back to shore. "'Twas right, said they, such birds to slay, that bring the fog and mist." Don't ask me where I got that from. Probably heard it on Oprah. Never got to ask Larry about what happened in those weeks they were gone. Been around gift horses long enough not to look him in the mouth. He was back. Thought life would go on the way life goes on, one day at a time. When the fog lifts enough to see the Lady Margaret laid up in the harbor, covered in that red seaweed, I always wonder if he'd still be here if I had. Safe out there, goodbye. The Lady Margaret was a traumatic experience for everyone on board. They were changed men when they came back. I visited with all of them in the days following their return. side is worse for wear. I've been trying not to think about changing. Like it could all be a bad dream I ain't woken up from. <clears throat> nightmares. All nightmares. Since that storm blew us off course. <clears throat> off the compass. Off the map. <clears throat> we didn't tell anyone about the shit we saw. About dead ships all caught up in red weed as far as you could see, about the things moving in the fog, in the water, about what we saw beneath it all, deep into the abyss, or what I found there, in that dungeon darkness, shone like a signal flare, like something fallen down from heaven above, you understand? A blade made of pure light, a thing of Terrible beauty. I could hear its siren song just, just calling me. Last I remember was the Creed boys hollering as I took a hold of it. 
You sure it took a hold of me. I wasn't strong enough. I, I know that now. They told me it pushed back the fog and the waves while I was out cold. Told me it saved us. It didn't save us. That thing brought the fog back to Kingsmith. I brought the fog back to Kingsmith. And I still hear that siren song. I know you hear it too. You could find it. You could stop that powerful noise. Put that burning brightness back where it belongs. In the deep. In the dark. I wonder what would have happened if I never left that Red Sea. Maybe Joe Slater never did. And all this is just some pitch dark dreaming. I guess I come across pretty hyped up about all this. It's not that I'm enjoying it, you know, I'm not one of those Norwegian black metal guys. I don't like, get off on death. But it feels like all my life I've been waiting for this to happen. I've read the books, watched the movies, played the games, buried a survival kit in the backyard. Awesome! I knew it! First the zombies rise from the dead, then they send in the men in black, and then the guys with superpowers show up. This is totally like the August issue of Katana Guy and Headphones Girl. You know, the one in Antarctica with the tentacles and mutant Nazi zombies. I am so psyched to meet you. Can you, like, fly? We could really use some superhero action in this town. I mean, it's a zombie apocalypse. You'd think with all the hours I put into Left 4 Dead, they'd let me carry a gun. But I just get the runaround. You're only 15. Yeah, I'm also like the last man standing. Not counting Andy, or Moose, or Henry, or Edgar. A anyway, 
It's not like I'm accidentally going to shoot anyone. Living. This sheriff doesn't even believe I saw the MIBs roll up in their black vans with no license plates. I used my RC plane with the wireless webcam, got a bird's eye view of the action. They're packing some sweet tech. Real made in Area 51 stuff. Good thing they're on our side. Um, they are on our side, right? Yeah, I figured they would be, since they're hurting up the mutant smurfs. You know the drog? And probably experimenting on them. Think alien autopsy footage in front of a live studio audience. That'd be really neat. In a totally gross way, of course. So, this is not your average everyday zombie outbreak. Sure you got your basic shamblers and runners, but they don't just bite. They do other stuff, like special effects stuff. And then there's the tanks, like, you know, big Hulk zombies, not zombie tanks with wheels. That'd be just goofy. But, kinda cool. Yeah, the mutant smurfs? Not my idea. That's Edgar. I think he even collects smurf figures. He's a bit weird, but he's totally cool once you get to know him. He's real funny. Just stay away from those dogs. Tango and Cash, they're evil. Carry biscuits. Carry lots of biscuits. How is having superpowers working out for you? My friend Carter, she has some real Sam Creek novel stuff going on. It's pretty wild. Like any girl can give you a drop dead look, only she could probably do it for real. But she's not like that at all. She won't even kill plants. I've given up on asking her to.
you seem to have produced an unqualified success. Hopefully one of many successes in our future, for the sake of all concerned. tell you much about the day that goddamn fog rolled in. I remember seeing it out in the bay, thick and dark, like pea soup. I went outside for a look -see, you know, and then everything went black. I woke up the next morning back in my trailer, splitting headache, like shop things were crawling around inside my brain. Tango barking like crazy, and Cash staring at the door like something spooked him good out there. Something big. Stinky. Tango! Cash! Down, boys! I said down! Hush, you'll taste the stick. You know you will. <laughs> Shut your pie holes, boys! We got ourselves visitors. Woohoo! And this one's breathing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now that's more like it. Ooh, they're mean some bitches. Sooner buy a chunk off your B.U.T. is look at you. Watch as you don't make eye contact, particularly with Cash there. That's the one right there. You don't much care for that. And he's the friendly one. <laughs> hey, Tango, leave that arm alone. It's infected. Fucking dumb motherfucker. Jesus Christ on a bicycle. Fucker's got a taste for Frankies. <laughs> oh, dog's been keeping the yard clean. Goddamn Frankensteins get spooked by him. Those who don't get spooked, they get torn into tiny little pieces. Even I get sick of watching them go at it, and I've seen some sick shit in my life. But the boys, they can't get to all of them. Frankies and Smurfs keep popping up like, uh, like bunny rabbits at Easter. Boom, boom, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh. You a dog person? Cats are good for nothing, except his yowling dish rags. <clears throat> you been a hero and all? I'm guessing it don't matter much. You ain't got a choice. You're here to fight Frankies and those mutant Smurfs, right? I even got some toys you can play with. Toys that go boom and splat! Don't ask me where I get them. Cause I won't tell you and they ain't none of your business, you understand me? <laughs> Look at that serious face on you. So now, maybe my boys can take a breather while I get some work done on the short bus from hell right here. <clears throat> we got ourselves a deal, hero. Mind you, keep the noise down. Tango and Cash are the sensitive types, you know? But I reckon they'll be happy to pick through the pieces after. <laughs>
Thank you.